All right, it is time to look at my February 2019 reading, check-in, and reflection. Hey everyone, it is Shannon, and I am here today to look back at the month of February in terms of my reading and see how I did, if I read stuff from my TBR, if I read stuff not on my TBR, how many books I read, pages, series, you know, all of the number things, the stats, and also look at some insights, what worked this month, what didn't work this month, what I, might I change in the future, and then you know, the books themselves. What did I read? Did I like stuff? Did I not like stuff? What happened? What was February like? So let's get this party started with the numbers because I like the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> and in the month of February, I finished a total of 17 titles, um, and that's actually exactly the same as January. I read 17 titles as well, so that that's unusual to, for it to be the same um, month to month, but that's what happened. Um, and I read a total of 4,180 pages, and that I, number I actually took from my daily progress count in my... Um, bullet journal or tracker. So that's my month, my February month. These were the books on my TBR. These were the books that were carryovers or um, random reads. And then I actually, so that's the books. And then I track daily how much I read by the number of pages. So I added all of those up. And that's where I got my total page count. It's not that far off from the total number of pages of the books I completed in the month, um, which was like 3,800 or something. And so, but there's always some, as I'm starting to notice this month and from last month, is that I don't finish all the things at the end of the month. So I'm usually carrying forward stuff from the month before, and I usually will carry forward things into the future month. So how many pages I read in the month is slightly different than the total number of pages um, for the books I completed reading, but it wasn't too far off. So I'm not too, I'm not too, um, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. So, but that's just where I got the number was from my, um, daily count of the numbers. So, yeah. So in terms of the actual books, my TBR this, uh, in February was a really big TBR. It was a total of 24 titles and what I ended up doing is I split it in two. Um, I did a primary or a priority TBR of the books that I would be like upset if I didn't finish not a great parameter and I knew that um and then I had an, an additional and that was 11 books and then I had an additional 11 books that were sort of my secondary TBR or my bonus TBR books that I wanted to get to but weren't as important as the other one and then I had two two secret reads <laughs> as well on my TBR and um and I gotta say this method did not work it was it was it came out of um not wanting to choose less than all of the things that I picked. <laughs> so in reality, I still wanted to read all 24 titles, but it's just too many. <laughs> And I thought that this would help. And I did, I will say that I did primarily read from my primary TBR or my like most important TBR. I did do that. But even when I crunched the numbers, because it was, even that was 11 titles and one of them was really long because it was Dance with Dragons, A Dance with Dragons by George R. R. Martin, which is 1200 pages. Um, so I looked at that primary TBR and I broke it down into how many pages I needed to read a day. Um, and it was 40 pages a day of Dance of Dragons and 160 pages a day of everything else. And I do not, I don't read 200 pages a day. Even at a, a month where I read over 4,000 pages, that's not 200 pages a day. And so that came up pretty quickly that I wasn't going to hit my goal. And that was just for those priority reads, not even the secondary reads. So that just did not have the month feel like it was really good. I felt very tense and I was very aware of the numbers and and I always I always track the numbers, but I often don't do anything with them. So anyway, it ended up being in the end, it ended up being not great because I didn't read all the books that I wanted. Um, but it also really helped me realize uh, the realism factor that I wasn't going to read that many. However, the big insight for me, and I applied this to my March TBR, was that because I track how many pages I read, I know how many pages I read, so I can actually create a TBR that matches how many pages I read, not how many books look shiny and new and I want to read. Like, I actually know how much I read. So, like, I can make a realistic goal because 
I should work towards the pages, not towards the just like, I want to read all the books. So that was a really great insight, and we'll see how it turns out in March. Um, so far, it's been going okay, but not great, but, but still, it's much better um, in terms of the fact that the realism factor to me was much better. I am an achievement-oriented person, and I'm an overachiever. But in this case, like I was finding that I was getting down, that I just wasn't hitting the page count, that I wasn't reading the books that I said I was going to read or reading all of them. And even if I completed something, my eyes just go to the next thing that's undone as opposed to celebrating the thing that was finished. So I think some revision needs to happen in all of that. And I have applied it already to March and hopefully it will be more successful and feel better because it just was way too much pressure. Um, and um, yeah, so it was, yeah, it was, it was not the best for that. Um, but it did lead to, I think, an insight that will be very useful for the future. The other really strange thing that I decided to do in February is that I realized that with the Dance with Dragons being 1200 pages, um, I decided because I had st my, 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 I started to enjoy the series less in the at the end of the previous book and I did want to catch up with it especially since I was reading it with the read your face off folks um and so I was doing it as a read along and I didn't want to crap out <laughs> you know on the last book and it's the last one to be caught up with the series so I decided instead of reading it regular pace that I would speed read it and so what I did with that is um like if it was a chapter about someone that I cared about a lot then I would read the chapter quickly and for almost everyone else I very quickly skimmed and there are some characters that um, really had a quite a shift in their perspective and their attitude and um, with those characters I very quickly very quickly skimmed and if it was something that I could get a sense that I knew where the story was going because of the TV show, I really went fast. So it's not like, you know, that's not my most proud moment. <laughs> <laughs> but I did want to finish the book um, and finish and catch up with the series. And it was my resolution to do that as well as read the other things on my TBR. So that was, and I haven't done that for a really long time. I actually don't, I can't remember the last time I sped read something um, because it's so unusual for me, but I just wanted to know about the stories and characters that I really, I really cared about. And um, there was just, it, one of the challenges with the, the series is they just, there's so much misogyny. Um, and um, just all of the female characters are just so talked down to for like, and it just, I just, I couldn't take it. So I'm ready to read some fantasy written by women. <laughs> are featuring really strong female characters. There are some really strong female characters in it, but it's just all of the people around them are so horrible and they speak so, like, just so, there's so much misogyny and sexism and I'm just not interested. And so for that, and it was, there was so much repetition of the same terms and stuff like that. I was just, by the, I was done. I was done. So anyway, I'm glad that I read it. I wish I enjoyed that last one the, the more, um, but I didn't. So, but I am caught up. So yay for that. <laughs> 1200 pages. Oh my God. So let's take a look at some more numbers. Um, so in terms of what I read comparative to my TBR, that was not or not on my TBR. So as I said, my TBR was a total of 24 books. I had 11 priority reads, 11 bonus reads, and two secret reads. And as it turns out, I ended up reading 11 titles from my TBR, um, from a little from each, actually, from those. And then I read six titles that were not on my TBR. And as it so happens, those six, ti six titles were all carryovers from the month before. So that's also a good thing to be aware of is that I need to leave some space for books that I'm carrying over month to month. Um, and then in terms of the books that were on my TBR, I, as I said, I read 11. And then for the remaining titles, there were four books that I started that I didn't finish. There were eight books that I didn't even start. <laughs> <laughs> and there was one title that I decided to DNF for now, and that was the Prose Edda, because um, I did participate in the saga long, uh, reading the Icelandic sagas, and I read the three short ones that were one story or one or like more like 25 to 50 pages, but the Prose Saga is is a book, and um, by the end of the, the last week of the month, I knew 
I wasn't going to finish it in time. So I just read the beginning part and then I decided that I'm going to put it aside for now and um, get back to it later. But I was happy that I did um, participate in Sagalong. That was a lot of fun. I wish I had actually participated more and, and watched more of the videos and left more comments um, because, you know, it was a, you know, a community event and I did read three of the four titles, but I think I mostly just talked about that in my Friday reads. And um, so I wanted to participate more. So that's good noticing as well that it's not, especially for a community event, it's not just about the reading, it's also about the interaction. So, um, but I decided very last minute and it was on my secondary TBR, but obviously I was very, very interested in doing it because I read three out of four. And I think all of the books I finished on my bonus TBR were the Sagalong titles. So yeah, I wish I had known about it earlier. I found out pretty late, but uh, anyway. So that turned out interesting. Um, I also did swap out two titles from my TBR um, because there were two titles that um, I chose. Like, for example, I chose a, a memoir. I put a memoir on my TBR, but then I realized I was already in the middle of a memoir. So instead of starting a new one, I decided to concentrate on finishing the one I was already in the middle of. And that happened for two books. <laughs> so, whoops, Shannon, notice what's on you're currently reading before you create your TBR. <laughs> because you might already be reading that. So, so that was pretty funny too. So next, next, let's, next, let's take a look at some of the, um, let's take a look at the series. Okay, so these are the stats that are um, created from the Brock's uh, Let's Read spreadsheet. And so they, uh, there's a great tab on there in terms of entering the series that you're reading, how far you are in them and stuff like that. And it calculates some very nice numbers for you. <laughs> numbers. And given that 11 of the 17 reads um, I had in February were parts of series, I think we can say that I tend to read series. So in February, I started two new series. I read seven titles that progressed in other series. I caught up in one series, which was the Song of Ice and Fire with the Dance and Dragons, and I completed one series. Yes, it feels so good. I completed The Themis Files by Sylvain Nouvelle by reading Only Human. Um, I had I'd started it last year, and um, it's a trilogy, and I definitely loved Sleeping Giants, the first book. I loved that one the most. And uh, the, the second book, I was a little, mm, and Only Human, I'm still a little like, mm, but it just, it took a very, I don't know, it had a very different tone, but that first book, wow, I really liked it. Also for me, that tends to happen. I think almost any trilogy I've read, like the, the first book is the one that I like the most. I like ideas and they seem to start in book one. So overall, in terms of series, I am, my series backlog right now, in terms of books that I've read this year or intend to read this year, is I have a backlog of 15 different series. <laughs> the total number of books in that backlog is 254, which is a big increase, uh, and I'll get to that in a second. And then the number of books in ongoing series I have to read are 28 books, and the number of books in completed series are 226 books. So that, that number dramatically increased because I... Um, I, I, one of the light, one of the series I'm lightly working through is the Classics Illustrated um, comics, and I realized in February when I was looking at the numbers that there's actually two. There's the Classics Illustrated Normal, and then there's like the joint European series, which has an additional 60 titles. So I had to add 60 <laughs> to get the right number. And I'm actually only using, a to the total number of uh, issues I'm using is actually whatever's available on Hoopla, not what's available in the world um, because I have access to them through Hoopla. So that's my goal is to read the ones that are available, not read all of them because, um, yeah, because that's what I decided. So overall, um, in terms of series, I for this year, I have started nine series. I have nine series that I'm progressing on. And then um, I, the same as this month, I have one series that I caught up on, which was the Song of Ice and Fire, and one series that I completed, which was the Themis Files. So those feel, both feel really good to have both completed and caught up with the series uh, this month, because last month it was all starting and DNFing and all that kind of stuff. So now I'm going to look at some of the projects that I'm working on. Um, this year is a very project-heavy year. All of my reading goals are 
are associated with particular projects and particular number of books that I want to read for said projects. I only actually decided about that in February, so I am a little bit behind on these, but I'm not going to worry about that too much. So first up for my Those Books project, I read one title. I read My Antonia. For my sci-fi fantasy and weird project, or exploration, I read one title, which was Something Wicked This Way Comes, which I didn't realize was on the sci-fi fantasy and weird title, or the list. I didn't realize that, because <laughs> I actually read it for my book to film challenge, for which I read one title, which was Something Wicked This Way Comes. <laughs> so, so that's kind of funny. Um, and I only, this one's not great. For my unwrappings, I want to read a total of 40 of my unwrappings this year, and I only read one this month, which was My Antonia, which I thought I had here, I guess. My Antonia. That was it. So hopefully in March I will read more because that one I am definitely behind. Um, I have a project where I'm reading the oldest books on my Goodreads TBR and for that I have read zero titles. I only 100% decided I wanted to do that project in February so I'm not surprised I'm behind. Um, for my Stacking the Series Challenge, which I am doing, and it is hosted by Sarah from Steeped in Books over on her Goodreads group, um, for that project I read five titles, which is what I read in January, which isn't too bad. Um, it's a little behind, but not too bad. And I have two A to Z challenges. I'm going to do an A to Z for graphic novels and an A to Z for romance novels. Sadly, no progress this month on either of those big donuts. Um, and then I have, I read one nonfiction art book, which is good. I'm on pace there. And I read, read, read one memoir, and I'm on pace there. I didn't read any nonfiction productivity books, but I read one last month, so I'm on pace there. I didn't participate in any readathons this month. I want to participate in 10 throughout the entire year. Um, so I still have lots of time to do that. Um, I did do, I am participating in a lot of read alongs, but I also want to participate in some readathons. So overall, for all of these projects, I am 9.9% through. I have 9.9 .9 progress, um, but we're 16.7 of the way through the year, so I'm a little bit behind on that. But as I said, I only decided what my goals were going to be for the year um, in February, so it makes sense that I'm not quite on pace for them. So now let's look at the actual books that I read. That is the fun part, and we're going to start from least favorite to favorite. I don't have... Um, I didn't write down what my ratings were, but I think I know where the turning point is. So from least favorite to favorite, sadly, we are starting with The Dance with Dragons. It, it was my least favorite title of the month. Sad. It's, it's not the best place to end a, you know, to catch up a series, but not to be like, like, I'm, I'm glad that I got there, but I just, I didn't, I didn't quite enjoy it so much. So that was sad. Um, next up, I read a very short introduction to astrophysics. This was very hard. It was very dense. It didn't feel like an introduction. I got some stuff, but a lot of it was like, not introductory. <laughs> <laughs> I read King Harold's Saga. This one I actually read the Classics Illustrated Edition as well as the text version, which is available through the public domain, and that was for Sagalong, as was the Saga of Eric the Red. This was actually a reread for me. I still didn't understand a lot of it on the reread. They are very much like, this is the thing that happened, and this is the son of this person, and this is the adventure they went on. Pretty dry stuff. <laughs> Pretty dry stuff. <laughs> Um, and then I read Wildflower by Ju Drew Barrymore. This was the memoir that I substituted in because I realized I was already uh, reading it. This one actually I listened to on Scribed on audiobook. She narrates it herself. And then I read The City of Lost Souls by Cassandra Clare. This is part of the Mortal Instruments series and it is the fifth book in the series, the penultimate book. And then I read How to Train Your Dragon, How to Twist a Dragon's Tail, which is also the fifth book in the series, and it is by Chrisetta Cowell, and this is for Becky's um, How to Train Your Dragon read along. And then I read Jungle Book for Classics Illustrated. This one was actually pretty fun. Um, some of the stuff was a little like, hmm, not sure about that. But uh, I read the Jungle Book story itself. And when I was going through all of the lists of the Classics Illustrated or creating lists of the Classics Illustrated, I decided to read this one because I had read the source text already. And then Only Human by Sylvain Nivelle. So this is my one series completion uh, for, for the month and for the year so far. And I was really happy to finish it because it's a science fiction book. And um, I wanted to get onto another science fiction series. And I like to only be in sort of one at a time. So I'm really happy that I finished that off. 
And then I read Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Classics of Volume 1, and this is by Eastman and Laird. Oh, it's not on there. Um, uh, yeah, so this one I just picked up off of Hoopla, and um, and it's a collection of a bunch of the older works. And um, I read some of the Team and Teeth that I, I owned last year, and I really enjoyed them, so I thought I would check one of these out, and I did enjoy it. Uh, and then I read the saga of Gunlag, the Worm Tongue, and Raven, the Scald, and this is translated by Eric Magnuson, and it was also an interpretation translation by William Morris. This was also for the saga long. This was easily my favorite. I really enjoyed this title. It was much more had a narrative style to it like it was much more of a story as opposed to just this is something that happened and this is something that happened so this one i i highly recommend checking out i can't remember if i got it from amazon or i think i probably got it from project gutenberg they're all in the public domain um because they're from like 1200 although the william morris has to be soon sooner than that i think um oh wow yeah so should have looked that up didn't mean to say that anyway i read that and i enjoyed it <laughs> Then I read Fables Volume 12, I think, yeah, The Dark Ages. It's a graphic novel. And then we get into, this is, we're now definitely past the turning point. I don't remember. It might have been the TMNT into the ones that I really enjoyed. And so uh, this was the penultimate peril um, a series from a series of unfortunate events by Lemony Snicket. This is the 12th and penultimate next to last title in the series of unfortunate events. And I really, really enjoyed it. It's really weird to be so close to the end of the series. I've been reading these along with Izzy, Punk Rock Girl PA, who hosts the series of unfortunate events read along at work almost there. One book left. Oh my gosh. Um, and then I read Willa Cather's uh, My Antonia, and I really quite enjoyed this. Um, it was, um, I am not always a big fan of more of literary works, but this, this one quite touched me, and I have done a review for it. I have no idea when it's going up, because I'm um, I, I bulk filmed a bunch of stuff, so I don't know. <laughs> it's, it might be the book reviews. I'm trying to post them on Thursdays. So on some Thursday, I will have a review of this one up, but I did quite enjoy it. And then my almost favorite, so this is my favorite, but before we get there, so, so it's kind of semi-spoiler, because there was no visual image for this one, so my next to favorite was Seeing by Gordon Andrews, and this is a photography book of all of these interesting textures and locations. And it's all about seeing things differently, and I loved it. I absolutely loved it. But it's not that well known, and there's not that many. This one I actually had to add to Goodreads. It was not on Goodreads, so I figured out how to add it. And it, like it just said, "Would you like to add this title?" And I was like, "Yes." And then I just filled out the form. I'm good at following instructions, so I filled it out. And so I'm the one person who has re read and rated that book. <laughs> so that was pretty. That was a fun experience. This one. And then last but not least, for sure, is Ray Bradbury's "Something Wicked This Way Comes." This is an urban fantasy slash horror slash coming of age novel um, that I read as my book to film adaptation for the month. It's also on the sci-fi fantasy and weird list, as I mentioned, and I have reviewed it, and this review has been posted, and um, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Um, the only thing I would have loved is if there were more female characters in it, but it was written in, I think, the 60s, so, you know, you know, it follows two young boys. I would love to see the story as two girls. I would love if the film adaptation had two girls instead, but, um, or a boy and a girl. Um, but I really enjoyed it. It has a theme of a carnival, as you can probably tell here. Um, it's got some really fantastical elements to it, some horror elements to it. I really enjoyed the characters. There's definitely moral dilemmas and, you know, challenges and growing family relationships and, like, and, and odd unusual happenings and scary things and you know life choices and I just like it had all of the things I just I totally loved it I gave it a nine and a half and it was just such a such a wonderful read so that was my absolute favorite of the month although there were lots of really good titles that whole back half more than back half of the titles I really enjoyed and um overall I feel pretty happy with my reading um I did feel a lot of pressure throughout the month and I did there were a couple of titles I carried over to March that I really wish I was done I had finished in February but you know 
you know, you just, you got to tweak things as, um, as they happen, as you learn more. And I'm really hoping to do that. And doing these reflections videos, I think really helps with that because you get to share what helped. So I hope that you had a good reading month in February. And I hope hearing some of these insights was helpful. I would love to hear what you have been reading and what you have noticed about your reading or made changes to, and if they've been positive. Like for me, I really thought this two TBR thing would be awesome. Oh yeah, it was just a big facade. I was just not making choices and wanted everything. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. <laughs> Hopefully Marshall will be more successful. Um, I, you know, I don't usually, you know, go for, I, as I said, I like to overachieve. So it, going with the realist approach is very strange, but if it's more successful, that you know, that's more of a bet. That's a better goal to have a, to be able to succeed or meet your goal is better than, is it better? I don't know. I still like overachieving. Anyway, obviously I'm still having a little dilemma with myself about that, but I think it was a pretty good reading month. I had lots of titles that I enjoyed and made progress on a lot of the projects, made decisions about a whole bunch of projects and my, how I'm going to do the year. Or so I think things are good. So there you go. There's my another. Wow, these videos are so long. I'm going to try and keep them shorter, but I don't know what to cut out. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that. And I will see you very soon in another video, hopefully a shorter one. <laughs>